Welcome back to the Bible Stories. Um, and it's, it's been an exciting journey just going slowly through different stories in the Bible. Some that you may have heard when you were in Sunday school. Some that you may have had preached somewhere. But just really looking at them very quickly and seeing what they could mean to us in our day-to-day life. And our stories right now are dead in the center of, a, of an amazing man's life. And this man was called Abraham. And where we are in this story, Abraham is about 75 years old. Um, and remember, he, he had been told by God to leave his home and he had obeyed. And I mean, I think his journey with God is just one of, of, of promises and covenants and the fulfillment of the same. Um, and it's interesting because I don't know what the, what's the biggest promise you have ever been given in your life or the biggest covenant you've ever made with someone in your life. I think if I look at mine, it would be getting married. And there's something about the words you say when you're at the altar and you're there saying, all I am, I give to you. All I have, I give to you. And even if you've ever had those words before, you know, said multiple times, when you're saying them before God and before your husband or wife, there's just something about the weight of those words. But we live in a world that is continually watering down what it means to make a promise, what it means to have a covenant between people. We live in a world that because of how fallen and sinful it is, the weight of it is no longer felt as much. And the problem is we are now starting to take this sense of fallenness in the world and our lack of trust, our lack of of holding weight to promises and transferring it to God. And so it's affecting our ability to just trust in God and release ourselves to Him. I think of think of my daughter um (laughs) constantly when i'm trying let's say to do something small and simple like cut her nails she's always telling me you promise you won't hurt me i'm always reaffirming that promise that i won't hurt her but the reality is because i'm human i cannot 100 percent guarantee that i will never hurt her and so as she grows older year by year you begin seeing an element of questioning those promises a bit more she still trusts because she knows you love her but each time there's a higher level of hesitation but we need to be able to differentiate that sense with humanity that is fallen and the promises that god has made with us and you see abraham and and where we are in our story in genesis chapter 15 just so you can be able to go read it in detail yourself God comes to Abraham again. And it's like God knows in Abraham's heart the years have passed since God told him to leave his home and promised him he'd make him great. And Abraham has not had a child. And God comes before Abraham and tells him, don't fear. That promise I gave to you will still come to pass. And Abraham tells him, I I can't see how. Unless it's through the only child who's been born in my entire household who was the child of a servant of his. Unless it's through that, I can't see how your promises will come to pass. And God affirms him. But this story for me encourages us in several ways. One, is that doubt is human. You see, there, there are many times we are made to believe that when it comes to being a Christian and walking with God, we can't lament to God about things that are not happening right in our lives, about things that we had hoped for. That we can't reach a point of questioning and doubt and turn to God and tell him, I, I don't see how this is happening. And Abraham just shows us if he is recorded as the father of faith, and he doubted, then we shouldn't beat ourselves up when we have moments of feeling weak and doubting and questioning. But the thing is to turn that doubt to God. And we see that when God comes and engages Abraham around his doubt, he reaffirms him. And this gives Abraham a new sense of zeal in his faith and his work and trusting in God. And this is a continuous, like when you look at Abraham's story all through, you see this repeated. A few chapters later, God does this again and he even has a reaffirms the covenant through circumcision of Abraham and his whole household. Like this is a continuous thing God does with Abraham to reinforce his faith. And and it's like God knows because we are humans, our faith needs to be based on something. And for Abraham, God used to have to come back to him. And for you and I, God is already present in his word. And for the very things we are leaning on and trusting on that God has promised us, we need to constantly go back to his word to be encouraged by God through his word speaking to us. The promises I have given you are true. I'm going to fulfill them. And, and Abraham's story just does that amazingly for us. And I don't know what promises you're leaning on that God has given you. But the greatest of them all is our salvation. 
God has promised us that when we believe in Jesus Christ, when we give our lives to him, that we will have eternity with God. And sometimes we can go through life and it can hit us so hard that we can question and begin wondering, hi, are those promises true? I remember a time when I was praying for so long for, for my daughter's healing when she had a, a certain stomach challenge. And two months passed and I began questioning, I, this God who promises healing, is it true? But when we go back to God in his word, he reaffirms us, he encourages us. And if there's anything Abraham's story shows us is that he fulfills every word he gave. The greatest being that we will be with him in eternity. So I just want to encourage you today as we continue through this journey with Abraham, as we continue looking at this guy of faith, as amazing as his story was, even Abraham struggled. But God kept a family again. So you and I will struggle keeping our faith in God, believing, going through the difficult times. We need to always turn back to him for him to encourage us and lean on his truth. Till next time, we'll see you later.